my trophy. Friends, welcome back to another Midlife Crisis. We are talking, of course, about Peakman uh, and its gloriousness. And specifically, uh, we're talking kind of mainly about Peakman 4 since it just came out. And oh, yeah. uh, Robbie yeah. and I have uh, ordered our, our Mark <laughs> our gear, pre-order. our pre-order Mark, mark bonuses because mm-hmm. um, we're suckers. Um, so oh, you're, you're not a sucker if you get it for free, Brian. <laughs> Daddy's on top. Um, so we were just kind of talking about getting into Pikmin 4 and how, how fucking incredible of a game it is. Uh, and we're going to continue doing that. Uh, we were talking about um, all the new mobility that the dog adds and how much yep. more fun to play the game is. is. And I also correctly pointed out, which you were just glossing over because you're a monster, a soulless <laughs> monster. Um, you were calling the creatures, uh, creatures. which are Pikmin. Yeah. Um, you, uh, I wanted to point out and uh, emphasize that they have a lot of character and personality that in other RTSs, the units just, just don't. like They simply don't. Um, and that's where we are. So I'm going to hand the reins back over to you so you can continue to publicly gush over Pikmin 4. So it's one. So an, in most RTS games, you get, you, you're developing military units, and you send, after you get those units, you send them out to go kill your enemies. Pikmin is the exact opposite of that. Your whole goal is to use your units to bring bra- back random objects to your to your base. Yeah. And the objects can be like uh, a donut or I think the biggest object I've seen in the game is a ham. Yeah. A and whistle. The way, so they you the casino in the, chips. In the game they call everything treasures because again yeah. these are alien pilots that don't they've never been to this planet. They've read about it because of the the work of uh, Captain Olimar who's like beamed information back to their planets. But to them like they don't know that this is Earth. And they don't know, like, everything is like a weird specimen, and they're supposed to be earth animals and stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of humor in that, like a fish out of water kind of a thing. Yeah. And that's been since the beginning of Peekman. Uh, when it was originally just Captain Olimar, like, he, he visits Earth and he doesn't know what's going on, that kind of thing. And over the games, it's changed. So in Peekman 4, you collect the treasures in order to get, like, a currency, and then the currency kind of unlocks more stuff in the game. Right. In Peekman 3, you had to collect. Uh, fruits to make juice uh, oh, that you could eat to survive. And Pikmin 2 and 1, it was more about collecting uh, stuff for your ship so that you could escape um, the the alien Earth that you're visiting. So that stuff's kind of changed or perme- permeated a little bit, but by and large, it's always been the same, where, like you're saying, like you go out with your with your horde of, of wonderful, cute critters and, and have them uh, steal and burgle for you <laughs> is really what it's all, it's really what it's all about. You have a horde of criminals doing right. your bidding. In the, in the name of some MacGuffin, yes. uh, they, yeah, you're trying to get objects, <laughs> steal and burgle objects. So let me ask you something, too, because you mentioned in the last episode, um, uh, Pikmin, okay, Nintendo in general doesn't have, even in, and we've talked about this, even like Zelda games don't have like real, like they have a lot of lore, tons and tons and tons of lore and stuff like that. But in terms of like a story, it's not there. Now, Pikmin is even more stripped down where like there is writing and it's to me, it's like charming, but I'm skipping a lot of it. Like I, I, in this game, I want to get more into the world than I do want to read anything. Like it doesn't matter to me. Um, do you think, uh, and this is a bird walk, um, do you think Pikmin would even benefit from having a story? And I, for me, I'll say this. If the story is presented in the way that they're presenting their story now, which is me reading a bunch of crap, then I, I don't care. I don't want it. Yeah. So my answer to that question is if the story is good enough, then every piece of media ever benefits from a good story. It certainly wouldn't really? take it away because, um, yeah, sure. Because you, you, it, you would just, it would just so, add. So, so Brick Out needs a story. I don't know what that is. Steve Wozniak's like video game that oh break uh, out Ar- Arknoid. So Arknoid. Pong needs yeah. a story. Do you- <laughs> well, um, well, it, it, no, it, n- those games don't need a story. Yeah. But the question, your question was a different question. Your question is, would it benefit from a story? My answer is every piece of media can benefit from a good enough story. But if what if the story, enough. so using, and I'll, I'll bird walk back to Peekman with this, trust me. But what if the story gets in the way of, uh, the, of really good gameplay. So in Pikmin, the one only complaint I have about Pikmin Four is, and I, it's not really a complaint. Like I don't hate what they're doing to me. Like the 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 at the end of the day, the the reading, it's fine. But I am skipping most of it. Uh, so am I, by the way. Um. So like, and that's their attempt of telling me a story. Yeah. It is one hundred percent getting in the way of me playing more Pikmin. So like, it is a story, and it is not benefiting my gameplay. So, and my point is like with Pong. Now, I, obviously, this is reductive, and it's, we're talking about Pong. It's primitive. Like, if all Pong is 
is you know pong ba- paddle ball win first to seven wins yeah like how would that possibly benefit by telling me some fucking stupid ass story about feelings like <laughs> i would posit that it doesn't yeah, each not, what would the pong story be it's like uh well no i mean, I mean pong I, I use pong specifically because it is you know it's me being an asshole and the story would be something like no brian don't say that You're <laughs> every time this guy i think <laughs> my point is i think that um i disagree with you about stories in video games in general i like stories in video games and when they're good they're that's fine yeah, yeah. but i actively think that some video games benefit directly benefit from not having a story to complicate shit to it gets you out of gameplay and i think peakman specifically like now it's a if this would be a different ball of wax if like they're if they have like really good a perfect example of this is on the wii u they made uh they being nintendo made these like really charming videos and like they're like straight up downloadable content videos that you yeah. would pay a dollar 99 for and they were these little short films about peakman and they're fucking great and i think they're on youtube now um, because you can't access the Wii U shop anymore, but like, there's not a not a single word of dialogue. It's all a visual story, and it's all like sight gags and like really fun visual stuff. So now, if Peekman told me a story in that way, um, which is totally doable and possible, there's many many movies uh, throughout cinema that don't have any dialogue that tell a story. Um, I'd be for that, but like them, the way that they're doing it now, like I I I want less. I want less of their story. Yeah. Okay, so. I, I, I'm not even sure if we're disagreeing, but um, I wholeheartedly agree that the, the way that the story is being done in Peakman is not great. The story itself is not great. And one of the complaints I have about the game is that when at the, at the end of every day in, in the game, you, you go out and you try to find objects over a day and a day last yep. some, like seven to 10 minutes. And then at the end of the day, you go through a series of loading screens and menu screens. And then you have, and then there's like a hub area and then, and the whole thing is like it's like a five minute slog yeah. to get back to the next day. Yes. And because the char- the the miracle of this game is the gameplay. Once you leave the gameplay, you want to get back to the gameplay as quickly as you can. So the fact that they take you out of it to tell you this is everything that you accomplished today, and here's a loading screen, here's another loading screen, and now you're in this hub area, and look at there's like 13 people you can talk to, and they're going to tell you nothing interesting at all, and you yeah. can and you can skip it, but it's not actually it's written dialogue, it's not even voice dialogue. All of that sucks. It just does. And um, again, it's a compliment to the gameplay, but also a criticism of everything else that I just find myself almost every single freaking time. And I'm like 52 days into this game now. Yeah. Wanting to just fast forward as quickly as I can to get back to the actual gameplay. So Pikmin 1, I know you haven't played it and I'm sure you're going to be playing it when uh, when it comes out um, on, on the cartridge on September. And that's how we do it around here. We buy our cartridges like soldiers, <laughs> like soldiers. Uh, but anyway... So that game, it's perfect. Like, that is Peekman telling you, a, again, this story is, it's not, you know, like, it's not going to fucking win any Pulitzers or anything like that. Yeah. But, like, it shows, the story is told almost entirely visually. At the end of each day, there's, like, a wrap-up where, like, Olimar will tell you, like, significant things that are happening. Um, and that's it. It's not overwordy at all. Um, and it gets you to Peekman faster. So yes. it's it's less story, still functions as it there but it gets in and out and i i really wish they would have done that in this one me, me too because well, it's, it's a little much with the with the with the with the yapping in the words and and the don't forget the loading the loading screen thing it's it's glaring to me because at this point the switch is starting to show its age a little bit yeah and with both the xbox and the playstation 5 they've made uh significant efforts to load to reduce loading times i would argue that's the single most next gen thing about these current now current gen consoles yeah. is the loading times and when you get used to that and then you go back oh and yeah now it's, it's brutal right so it's not like these are like playstation one loading times or right. anything like that with pikmin 4 but it is another that if you're used to your PlayStation 5 and your right. Xbox, it's like, oh, 20 seconds, I got to wait for this thing to load up and, yeah. then a, and then another 20 seconds to get back. And it just it just sucks. Okay, so let me say two more things about the story. One, um, if, you're, if you're not going to have a story, then it, it would be really cool if you could do uh, the, the buzzword from about 10 years ago was emergent gameplay. Mm-hmm. And Peekman kind of calls out for that a little bit. The best example of emergent gameplay I can think of for a game, I'm not sure if you played FTL. Did you play FTL at all? I didn't, but I'm I'm totally okay. familiar with it. So FTL, you're in a you're in a spaceship and you and you have a little crew and you're trying to basically survive to get to the the end of the thing, and you can name your crew members and they have like little personality quirks, 
And you do find through the gameplay, you end up surviving so much crap that if you have a crew member that has somehow made it through all of this crazy stuff that's happened, and then now you're, you know, three levels from the end of the game or whatever, you're without the game prompting you to do so, you're taking extra efforts to make sure that that one person stays alive yeah. because they've been with you the whole time. So it's like the game doesn't tell you to do it. It's just emergent gameplay that sort of comes out of it. So if Pikmin's not going to have a story, and but it does have these cute little creatures, I would prefer more of that. Now, maybe if I wasn't so dead inside, mm-hmm. then I would just want to save my Pikmin naturally anyway. If Pikmin had just ripped the story out entirely mm-hmm. and there was no literally no story... I think that actually that game would be better. I'm telling you right now, I think Pikmin 4 would be better with no story. I agree with you. Just gameplay. Yeah, I agree I agree with that. No. But again, the original question was, would Pikmin benefit from a better story? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I mean, define better. But sure, if, you know, if... Well, the original question was not, it was benefit from story, not better Oh, benefit story. from yeah, story? It's just like, does, the, well, does this a, But need... there is a story, though. No, I know. But we... Oh, but so if, if, if you and I agree that the story gets in the way of the gameplay... Correct, yes, And we, we do. both want to get to the gameplay better. Also true. Then... Therefore, shouldn't like we both say that get the story the fuck out of our game, or you would say make the story make the story okay better. right right. And then I made the point about like they they have they've proven that they've done that like because Pikmin oh, one because Pikmin one Pikmin actually- one can do that. And then the little side story movies that they made for Pikmin three yeah. like they they obviously are very talented CG studio. They they made cool like dialogueless. So they could have done that. Yeah. And I agree with you there. Yes. Okay. So let me try to ref- refine, I guess the argument a little bit. So first Pikmin four, and I think we agree would, would benefit from there being no story as opposed to the story that's there. Yes. Um, okay. Second, I, I think all those arcade and arcade shooters, an example d- doesn't need a story to be a good game. Not, mm. not all games need stories to be good games. Um, however, I think if you can, this, and this is so, such a stupid thing to say, cause it's so subjective. If you can put a good story into almost any game, it's like, okay, well then, then why not? Then why not give, give us a reason to have a character that we find compelling yeah. or an end point well, that okay. we're interested in. I think that's it. Heading La- towards. That's it. Laser focused. Yeah. It's like, so your point of view is like, well, if you can, why don't you? And then if mine, you can, and it's good. Why don't you? Yeah. Sure. And, and, and mine is like, well, you don't need to. So don't. Like yeah. you can, yes, or I you can know. also not. Uh, that's fair. That, okay. That's the, that's the dispute. Yes. Okay. So in a few years, we'll do a things we were wrong about episode <laughs> about this. Yes, <laughs> that's that's fair. No, I think to to button this all up and then we can get back. To, we can because it's clear like we share the same criticism and complain about Pikmin Four. And yeah. and from my vantage point, it's the only one. I've seen other people complain about uh, the fact that the game is easy. It is not a complaint that I'm going to have. I love the fact that this game is easy. It's like relaxing jacuzzi fun i'm having a great time easy oh, and no, i want to keep it there well <laughs> okay may, finish your your other thing and then I'll, i won't say something about the difficulty go ahead okay um but yeah that's the, the only criticism i have about this game is story related and it comes from what i've said like yeah. I, I i don't think i think in a lot of cases story actually takes away from gameplay and i don't want it there yeah. that's my point of view and yours is that if you if you can and do it good why not do it why not put the effort there? That kind of a thing. But I do agree that the story in this particular game does actually take away from the gameplay. In fact, I, I, I actively dislike it and I hate it when you get back to the, the hub area and there's like 13 people yeah. for you to talk to yeah. and they don't really have anything interesting to say. But if you're a completionist like I am and you feel like you need to talk to them to just get all the dialogue options squared away or whatever. And sometimes you have quests to turn in mm. um, and n- none of it is, is enjoyable. This game has, it, 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 there's like a part of this game that is just as enjoyable as any game I've ever played ever. Yeah, it's not totally. hyperbole. And I have no idea why Nintendo wouldn't just crank that up to 11 and why they tack on all this other crap that just doesn't, doesn't need to be there at all. Yeah. Just focus on the thing that's super, super fun. Or if you are going to have this other crap on there story, then make it a really good story. Yeah, yeah. And Nintendo, as we've uh, referenced on a few podcasts or a few shows now, um, they, this is sort of a blind spot that they've got. It was just storytelling in general. Um, on their first party games and Pikmin is no different. It's not, yeah. not a super compelling story and that's being very charitable about it. Yeah. I, okay. I guess that's where I'm hung up on. Um, because like I don't, uh, I am a very clearly a Nintendo fanboy. I very clearly also see these same criticisms that you fairly lay, lay a lot of these games. Um, but I just don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I, I just don't, I don't think I don't, to me, like I, I, uh, I, I think I've said this on the show before, but I'm I'm very much a Roger Ebert man when it comes to this stuff. Like if I, if I want that stuff, I'll go get it from another medium. Like I don't look to video games 
for that stuff. When it's there and it's good and it's great, it's fine. And like I said, like I do occasionally seek it out um, depending on genre. But by and large, like I don't play games to be told stories. Um, and I think that really just kind of boils down boils I mean, down to that. Your favorite game ever is Chrono Trigger. Yeah. And isn't part of the appeal of that game the story that goes into it? Yeah, it's a part of it, but I don't I don't think anyone would even say that like Chrono Trigger has like super like well written like it it doesn't. It's a 16-bit role-playing game. What mm-hmm. makes Chrono Trigger so good is like all of the other things that come together as a whole. So like the music, the aesthetic, the setting, the atmosphere, definitely nostalgia is a part of that too because it's mm-hmm. you know it's a fucking old old game. But like yeah, um I don't I, and I think like I've, the more uh, cause like we talked about on the heavy rain thing, like there was a time where I was really excited, like genuinely. And this is way before you were, you were playing these games. Uh, like I was genuinely excited about the idea of having a cinematic video game. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm just bringing that up to say like, I've been into that stuff for a long time and I feel like, uh, I've seen it kind of peak and I, it hasn't panned out the way that I thought it would overall in terms of genre medium. Because back in 2000, 10 when heavy rain came out yeah you would have thought that okay video games are now getting to the point where they can take the next step well look at the ps3 and the 360 right. like they did start to look like and the next step is make making it a more cinematic right. experience for purposes of immersion and storytelling and character arcs yeah. and all the rest of it and then it just never caught up to movies the way that you thought that it would well it, it that that's for sure true I, and i that is how i think it hasn't caught up to movies in the way that i thought it that it would but i also think it's actively gone it's made video games worse like if i look at a game like um uncharted for example and we talked we did an episode about uncharted those are really good games yep um but they are like i feel like they're almost hampered by the story that they tell because it's like they're focusing so much on being a big bombastic explosive like visual thing like a movie that like maybe like imagine obviously just spitballing here like imagine uh, an Uncharted game that's everything's the same mechanically and visually and all those things that we come to love about Uncharted games, but now it's like this giant ex- ex- expansive open world tinkery type of a thing where you can, uh, you know, like like every other game that's made today, like oh there's that thing up there and now I can figure out how to get to it. That kind of and it's just purely gameplay, like yeah. that stuff. Like uh, there is a potential where th- an Uncharted like that exists and maybe it's a better game. It's a really good point, actually, because when we did that Uncharted episode, um, I was supposed to spend the entire episode criticizing the game. And if you go back and watch it, I spent about 75 percent of it praising the gameplay and all the various things around the gameplay. And then when it came time for me to criticize it, the only thing I really criticized was the story and plot holes and, and characters being inconsistent with what their motivation should be and things like that. So in that case, it's like, okay, well, if those if those problems that I had were just purely with the with the story part of the game, yeah. and and those weren't there, and it was really just the gameplay, would that have actually been a better game? Eh, could be. Yeah, it's, could there's be. there's at least the possibility or the discussion to have that maybe maybe it would be. But you know, it is in that game, and Pikmin is in that game. Pikmin is what it is, which yes. is unfortunately a wonderful video game with too much fucking talking <laughs> that we both agree to skip on. But let's bring it back to Pikmin Four. I yeah. do like our conversation about how our brains are very different. Uh, but, <laughs> That's always fun. Uh, back to Pikmin Four. Let's talk about the Dan, the Danbury, the Donbori battles. My-
Okay, so it's the the Dandori, and Dandori is the it's it's it is a battle that is a gameplay component, mm-hmm. but it's also it's a way of life, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it totally is a philosophy, as the yeah. game is is want to tell you. And uh, you 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 brought up the difficulty earlier and how easy the game is. Mm-hmm. The game is actually not that easy if you play it as God intended, mm-hmm. like all video games, to get a platinum on everything. <laughs> to do play it as a literally every square inch of content in the game. Which is what I am doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so far in the Dandori battles, you better believe that I would play them over and over and over again. Until to get I, them absolutely perfect. Which I did. Yeah. On all of them. So my first one that I did, that's like the thought that came into my mind is like, oh, he's going <laughs> to... He's just, he's going to, he's going to develop a twitch. You got your these. bronze medal yeah. and you're on to the next thing. Well, I, right when I saw the, the medal pop up, I was like, oh, he's, it's over for him. That's it's already done. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I, so I haven't, as we record this, I haven't quite beat the game yet. I feel like I'm 90% of the way there mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm on day 53, something like that. And I'm probably close to 30 hours in. And the only reason I haven't beaten it is because I insist on doing everything and getting everything. So all the, the, the explorations like that has to be a hundred percent. The Dandori battles, which we'll talk about in a second, I got to get platinums on yeah. all those. You have then, to. <laughs> then there are, there are two sort of versions of that. There's, uh, there's battles against uh, an AI opponent where mm-hmm. if you beat them by a certain amount, you get a better trophy. Then there's basically um, like PVE uh, style pu- puzzles where they give you a certain time and you've got to collect treasures around the map within that certain amount of time. So I got to get platinums on all those too. Yeah. And so I've, I've done that so far, but uh, to, to, anyway, if you do, if you play it that way, the game is actually quite a challenge, but in a, in a super fun way, because the other gameplay is so much fun. Yeah, you want more of it. Even when even when I fail, it's like, well, getting better. Yep. Just uh, right back into the into the Shark Tank there. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a total opposite when it comes to the completion aspect of it. But I love I love this game so much and how much I uh, like the feel of playing it. Yeah. That I'm probably not gonna go full OCD completion like you, but compared to what I usually do with a game, like I'm gonna be doing a lot more. Like uh, just getting the hundred percent in each of the the major zones. Yeah. Like that one for me is like a must deal. Oh, like, okay. If, like, with Zelda games, my rule with Zelda games is always like, I haven't completed a Zelda game until I get all the heart pieces. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. like, so you got to at least, yeah. So with the Pikmin, like with this, it's like, well, I can at least see those big gold a hundred percent and have fun getting there to do it. And it's just another really fun part of the game. So you have the story mode and that's really fun. Mm-hmm. And then you have these sort of battle areas in one instance where you're fighting against the opponent, uh, an AI opponent, but I, you can do a uh, human opponent as well. Mm-hmm. And you're you know, just getting treasures around the map and trying to stop them from getting treasures. And your little characters can battle each other, too. And is, that, is the is the, the Dondori mode online? I don't know because I have not yeah, played I, it. I never thought it even... I just assumed that it wouldn't be because it's a Nintendo and it's Pikmin. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so and couch, we've couch been down this only. road before. I remember when uh, we were talking at the time of Pikmin 3 Deluxe coming out. Yeah. And I remember reading, oh. like, oh, there's online. And yeah. the battle mode in that game was also super fun, yeah. uh, which is, you know, basically Don Dory is a little different. But, like, we both bought it and found out, like, oh, no, they lied. Like, there's no online here. What was the game where you and I were actually had headsets on and we were, I don't think it was a Nintendo game. I think it was an Xbox game. We were at, we were trying to get a game to work and then it was, like, 20 minutes into it, we figured out that there actually isn't an online uh, two-player I mode. I think that was Pikmin. Oh, that I'm pretty was sure you, it, was P- it was Pikmin oh. 3 Deluxe, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost positive. Why aren't we playing? Why yeah. can't I see? <laughs> yeah. it's like, why no, am I logged in? <laughs> uh, yeah, and it turned out like the online mode in that game was, I think, like a leaderboard. Like it was just an uh, online leaderboard or something yeah, stupid yeah, like okay. that. So, so maybe that's an, another thing to complain about. The <laughs> gameplay is so good. It would be super fun if there was some kind of like ranked matches. Dude, or... I've wanted the since or the original release of Pikmin Three. That multiplayer mode was so much fun. Like, I've, yeah, it was. I wanted to play online with this thing so yeah. bad. Yeah, and I, and on Pikmin Three, I played through the multiplayer mode as well. And I was like, it was the most other than my experience with portal two with you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was probably the Pikmin was my most fun couch co-op game that I've, I've ever played. Yeah. It's it's super good. It's great. Um, So let's, let's talk a little bit as, as we wind down, we're, we're on the road to winding down, but we can, we can, we can walk, not run. But um, let's talk about the fact that this series that rules and is like kind of becoming a little bit more of a hit. Um, every one of these games is going to be on one platform. They're all on switch. 
which hasn't oh. really ever happened before. What a good point that is. Um, that's pretty bad to the bone. And so now you're yeah. you've mentioned that you never played one or two before. You you are going to have no excuse now. Of course. Well, it's going to yeah, it's going to change immediately yeah. as soon as uh, they come. So out. the fact that they're that they're doing that, like yeah. what what do you think? Just gut reaction, like wh- like put your put your your Nintendo cap on here. Yeah. The fact that they're doing that, what do you think about that? So it's first of all, it's amazing because uh, one. In, what was the system that one and two came out on? Wasn't it the GameCube? Wii? Oh, GameCube, yeah. that old. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, that sort of explains why they, they weren't more popular then. Um, I can't wait to play them. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say, though, that 3, when I went back and played 3 on the Switch, you you could see the graphics were pretty dated, uh, especially on a really big TV, you know, compared to how I played it originally. Um, but, again, who cares? The gameplay is so awesome. Yeah. It's just like that gimmick never gets old. So... For me, it, it actually reminds me of uh, my forays into the Uncharted series. I never played an Uncharted game. I got a PS5. And here's all of them. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, well, I'm going to platinum the first one, platinum the second one, platinum the third. And I'm going to do the same thing with, with Pikmin. Yeah. I already did, did, already did Pikmin 3. So now uh, Pikmin 4. And then when Pikmin 1 and 2 came out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it with that as well. What I really hope, though, is that Pikmin 4 is such a good game. Pikmin 3, I was really encouraged when you said that the Pikmin 3 release. When I think I think Pikmin 4 is also also selling pretty well right now. Too. I think it's selling pretty well also. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're all in the wake of like the, the Zelda avalanche. Of, yeah, but the, for, the for the people who are, you know, you know, guys like me who buy Switch games, yeah. <laughs> like Pikmin 4 was like, that was the next big one. So yeah. I think... Uh, all of us out there, all of us uh, creeps. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. There you go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all went from Tears of the Kingdom to this. Oh yeah, that's that would be the next big yeah. purchase for sure. Skipped right over uh, Final Fantasy 16. There <laughs> just... couldn't uh, couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered at all. Are you still playing it? By the way, uh, no, I'm playing Pikmin, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Pikmin and Dave the Diver, the two so, games we've talked about. One here. of the reasons why I'm not um, at nearly as far as as you are in Pikmin is because like it's just this. This is perfect storm of me having so much new crap that I want to play yeah. all at one time, and Pikmin Four kind of came out right in the middle. But I am still like, I'm like tearing away stuff to make sure that there's Pikmin Four time because, like you, I waited for it for a really long time. I get actual anxiety when there's like bun- bunched up game releases, yeah. and we're right in the middle of one. Baldur's right Gate now. Three just came out, right? Baldur's that, Gate that, Three, that, and it's you. getting really That's Popeye good. spinach right there. I, I might have logged in at four, literally four o'clock in the morning <laughs> after playing Pikmin until three thirty in the morning, and Getting I was shit like, done. I just can't go to bed yet. I need to at least see need what to try more. I need to see what the character creation screens like at Baldur's Gate. Yep. And then it, we're just two weeks away from Armored Core Six, which mm-hmm. I'm which I'm buying on on reputation because of FromSoft. And then one week after that is Starfield. So this is the the murderer's row right yeah, now. Yeah, it's not we're in the middle time, of it. for sure. Um, yeah, for me, I'm playing Pikmin 4, still playing Street Fighter 6. I'm still playing Like a Dragon Ishin. And I also got back into uh, Shenmue, of all, <laughs> of all things. <laughs> Again, ships passing in the night. The Venn diagrams are totally different. And then Pikmin is like, that's, that's yes. the, 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 the one thing. Covered. Yeah, it's the, one, the, the, the braid of rope that, we, that we're climbing together with. <laughs> totally. I, uh, the only reason I'm playing Shenmue again for the 50th time is that I bought a doohickey. I bought like a really special video cable that makes my Dreamcast look as good as humanly possible. And what better way to celebrate what that fact yeah. than to play Shenmue for the fucking 30th time. <laughs> really um, but back to Pikmin. As we as we as we put a lid on this, so I bring up the fact that all of those games are out on the Switch because a it's awesome, but b here's a concern that I have of this, like are they doing this to kind of just like like do a big Pikmin dump and then forget about the series again for another decade? Yes, that's my big fear. You do you think that's how it's well, going to go? Well, Pikmin Four. Ju- so here's the thing with Nintendo, Pikmin Four just came out, and other than Mario and Zelda, really Mario and Zelda. Nintendo has kind of a reputation of putting things into the into the the closet for yeah. a long time, and then you and they do like them. a big release of yeah. like of with that's been waited for for a really long time. Yeah. And they do it and then it goes away. So on the one hand, it's super encouraging for me that Pikmin one and two are coming out because I want everybody to play these games because I am convinced that anybody who plays them, it is it's a first party Nintendo product from Shigeru Miyamoto. Like that should sell it by itself. Yeah, just like we music. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Brian. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going in one direction. You totally you stammered me. I had to. I had to. So uh, if everybody just, if you all just go out and play this freaking game, you will like the game. The game is amazing. And I and so the more games that are out on the system, and you said Pikmin 3 sold pretty well, and that Pikmin 4 is selling pretty well. Great. Everybody should buy this, and it should become just as big as any other Nintendo first party uh, brand other yeah. than Wii Music. Well, here's, a, I, here's the deal. I think 
I, first of all, this is how I think it's going to go, and we'll be, be happy to do a we got it wrong on yeah, this. Yeah. But I think that this is the last peak we game for a long, long time. Probably right. Um, what I would like for it to happen is like they give us, uh, and look, it's Nintendo, so this is probably going to happen. But make another Pikmin game, like when the new system comes out, that's kind of like a like a Pikmin Ultimate, if you'd like, uh, where it just has a bunch of levels from other Pikmin games. Yeah. But give me the ability because it's a new system, and I'm assuming it's going to have like you know at least it'll be at least uh, two switches duct taped together, as their engineers like to do. But like. Give me a Pikmin game where I can control like 300 fucking Pikmin at once. Oh, like make make awesome. make it big, super big maps. Yeah, yeah and because like, of like in the original Pikmin, it was always maxed out at 100. I think it's always wasn't there in three. I think they allowed you to do 200, or my I, I might be oh, misremembering shit, I can't that. Now. It was just a few months ago, and I can't even remember. Yeah, but w- w- whatever it is, like yeah, I think that's that be more. That should be the next step, the next yeah. evolution of Pikmin. 500 Pikmin. Yeah, army. Give me a. Fucking armada of these yeah. adorable little fuckers. That's what I want to do. <laughs> to kill. To kill. <laughs> to kill for my monetary game. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that'd be cool. And then an online online battle system, maybe with like a ranked leaderboard. Yeah. That, that would be neat for me, at least the competitive uh, person. Any sort of online mode where we can reenact Braveheart, but with Beekman. <laughs> How cool would that be? I mean, come on, <laughs> it's been there. It's just right there. It's right there sitting right there, Nintendo. It's, 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 there's gold here, Jerry. It's gold. There's plenty of gold. So I think that's probably a good place for us to wrap it up here. Peakman comes so highly recommended by, by the... That, by the, the highest recommendation. Yeah. And if you... If you guys are watching and you ever see an episode where Brian and I are like, yeah, buy this game. We're both saying the same thing. You need to go buy the game because yeah. we, there's not a lot of overlap between us. So it we means, both it means a sum. It does. So we I think enthusiastic uh, two thumbs up or mm-hmm. gen- gentleman's handshake on the game or. Oh, what, I'll, what I'll a- gentleman's handshake <laughs> on this Peekman. You, you bet. You goddamn right. I will. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Peekman for hi- highest recommendation that I could possibly give. And the, the lesson don't be deceived if you look at it and you think it's uh, it's this cute, cutesy little sim- simplistic thing. There's actually a lot of depth there, a lot of fantastic mm-hmm. gameplay, and it just never gets old. And for those of you that have uh, just a sliver of joy and imagination in your hearts, <laughs> that's right. just that's right. play Pikmin because you know, it, you look at it and you go, yeah, that, yep, mm-hmm, that's for me. <laughs> T- tons of fun. Yeah. And that way we can all get together. We can all come together. And let's absolutely. Oh, gentlemen's, gentlemen's handshake. We're coming together. Right. Oh, there we go. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. That was like a yin yang right there. 